So next up is Arch Ravels. This is from XYZ Game Labs. Um, I did talk about earlier a little bit that we have played this multiple times on Tabletopia as part of some of our charity live streams. So I was excited when at the game conventions um, I got to go talk to Adam um, the, and talk to Lauren of XYZ. Lauren kind of does a lot of their social media stuff. Uh, so she's played with us several times. Adam, I believe... Is he the owner of XYZ? I don't know, but he's always at the booth. He's kind of like the lead of everything. Let me see what it says. I don't know if I have his card right here. But Adam is really nice. Um, great to hang out with, learn games from. And at the game convention, they basically just kind of asked, Hey, hey, you already have this game? I was like, actually, no. We've only played online. Um, Chris, who I stream with, had the game. And they like... Here, great. You take a game now so you can review it as well. So I was really appreciative of that. So I do thank them. And I was also able to get uh, this little bonus card pack mini expansion type thing, which we'll go over when the time comes. So I'll set that aside here. Uh, for those who don't know what this game is about, it's a, as we can see right here, two to four players, 30 to 45 minute game. It says ages eight, eight and up. Uh, this is... Uh, if you boil it all the way down to its base uh, components, it's a set, uh, kind of a set collection resource management style game. But there's a lot more to it in that the theming really makes this game. This It's all themed about uh, crafting and sewing together projects. But they did a really great job of being inclusive um, with uh, different types of characters in the game. Um, and so it really fit well with our motto of playing games and spreading joy because the spreading joy part is being uh, inviting to everyone at the table, making them feel welcome, that they like they belong, and being inclusive um, of all different backgrounds is part of that. So just everything they've done in this game to be inclusive is um, kind of fits so well that it, it's hard not to appreciate what they've done with it. Let's get into it. So like we talked about, Arch Rivals is a two to, two to four player game, 30 to 45 minutes. It says ages eight and up. Now this is the base um, retail copy, I believe. Um, so it will not, they also have uh, upgraded components you can purchase that actually have um, some extra wooden bowls and such that I do not have with me. Even without the upgraded components, this is a very lovely game. So you can always already see the matte finish and then the actual name they they did a gloss finish on, which is a nice effect. I can put that back here out of the way. Okay, so right on top, we actually have um, a pattern uh, which tells you what you would need. Uh, like actual materials or you can go make the actual pattern of this project which is one of the projects project cards in the game so that's fun that they've added uh added in a little extra kind of uh bonus thing right there in, uh, in the top of the box where oh i want a an octopus i can actually go make it now so it's, it's kind of cool that they did that and then it looks like we have uh, just a little booklet uh, talking about some of their different games um, from XYZ. And right here in the cover, of course, is the Arch Rivals, which we're opening up, um, kind of showing off components in general. But if, if you're interested in more of their games, I do recommend checking out uh, the XYZ Game Labs, uh, dot com website uh, to learn more about all of their games as well. So now the rule book. The important part. Without rules, we can't play the games, right? So right on top, I do like they reiterate number of players, play time, and such. Easy to find that. They do a little index of the contents. Going over all the components, which, of course, as you know by now, I love when they label everything very well uh, to verify things. And then when you're reading through, you can re quickly reference what those components are. Uh, and then we go through uh, player setup with a very clear pictorial of it and 
indicating the player powers immediately so you understand what the what the board means because this is also an asymmetric style game in that each player's board is slightly different. Uh, the core mechanics for everyone is the same, just in general, the number of times you can do something uh, is, is slightly varied. So then it, we get into the game area setup, which is gonna be the main board and all the components. And then we get, uh, again, it goes over gameplay, um, kind of what you do on your turn what the different icons actually mean on your board as well. What the different actions actually do uh, with a quick reference of what those actions would look like. So it's really easy to tell what you're actually doing. And then it talks about the patterns, um, even more of the actions, exchanging uh, some of your resources if you, wanna, if you need different colors or something. And then kind of the end of, end of turn uh, step that happens every turn. Uh, cleaning up and restocking is basically uh, setting it up for the next player. Uh, that's continuation of that. Uh, and then finishing a project, um, really how you get the most points is finishing projects and um, turning in uh, collected yarn resources and sewing them or crafting them into a project or di of different types. Uh, they're, they're, They've also uh, used a lot of terms from craft, uh, crafting and sewing in general. Uh, so you can, they've actually named it frog it, where you can, um, which is a term used to basically uh, pull an item apart and redo it. So with the frog it action, or you can basically pull a project or an item apart to get your resource, get some resources back. Uh, it talks about how the game ends. Uh, how you score points. Um, there's also a way you get negative points, so do be aware of that uh, the first time you play. So you can't just over collect everything. And then we got our credits. Uh, they're nice enough to talk about play testers, special thanks to different people, and not just a generalized, oh, here's the designer, here's the artist, and that's it. They give a lot of different credits and uh, everyone who's helped them, which is always nice to see when a publisher does that. Then right on top we have our punch boards. Uh, actually two different size boards, which you don't see super often. Most of the time you see one, one size or the other. And so we're going to do our uh, quiet the music and punch some of these and listen to it so you can see just how well these punch. Again, this seems to be about two millimeters thick, uh, pretty standard uh, punch board thickness. So let's listen. Okay. So not not a super crisp snap, which isn't terrible. Um there that sounds a little bit better. Part of it's the, the shape of it. If you don't punch it just right, it will sound slightly different. So let's take a look at quick look at some of these parts real quick. So that tab is super thin. So part of the reason it's not as loud is also when you get that thinner tab on it, which uh, the, the better side of not having a thick tab is uh, punches easier, less tearing. Uh, but that smaller tab can also occasionally lead to pieces falling out early in the box. And uh, if it could damage something if falling out in the wrong uh, position in the box. But overall, these are good thickness, they pop well, or punch well. Uh, no tearing, uh, good double-sided printing. A very small tab, so almost not noticeable once, once they've been punched. Uh, the key is gonna be all these special shapes and how they punch, because uh, that, that typically determines your quality if these special shapes punch well. We'll start with uh, some of these bigger ones and special, uh, and then we'll get to the small custom ones. So the scarf, remove that so we don't get too much uh, noise falling on that right there. Okay, th these are actually punching very nicely so far. Uh, not much pressure at all to get them to come out. Uh, no, no weird hanging and tearing at any of these uh, different corners, which is always uh, nice to, to find out. So here might be the trick because of that really tight corner and that and those 
or even punching. Nice, without issue. Uh, no tearing. So definitely uh, good quality. Uh, cut all the way through um, on what other method they're using, be it uh, laser or a knife punch. Okay, that one's sticking on me, so that might be one I come back to because I don't want to risk tearing it. There we go. Just sometimes those corners will get you. So that right there is probably the closest I've had to a hanging one, but even that didn't take much to make sure it came out. And, and it still did not tear. So I'm uh, still happy with it. Uh, there's another hanger. There are only two hanging so far. And I ex typically expect a lot more to hang when you have these custom uh, cut lines and curvatures. So overall, they're punching very easily. And then they have uh, their first, uh, more just kind of a, I don't know if they use this for first player. I don't, I'm not sure if they do, but it's just kind of a, uh, put it with the box. This is from the first edition of the game and their first printing. Uh, keep that with the box to kind of be like, hey, I I had the game when they first made it. Okay, so in the box as well. Um, of course, all of these square rectangle, not square, rectangle tiles are, have different uh, colors on them as well uh, for different things you're making from mittens uh, to different bears. And then and while you play the game, there's ways you can like lear learn these projects and switch it from it being very specific colors to uh, any color. Um, they're still worth points. And so we have mittens, we have the scarves, and we had, so that's all, all I'm seeing on the tiles right now. But as far as these little uh, things you can make, you can make blankets worth worth five points. Uh, those teddy bears worth three points. You got the mittens we could make. And where is, okay, and we've already seen them, the hats as well you can make. You have these extra little tokens um, for ex extra yarn. Uh, so instead of ones, they count for three to kind of help you keep count of everything. Move those to the side because they'll actually go back in the box in a minute. And let's, yeah, we'll go through the wooden components real quick. So I won't shoot need to keep all of these bags, but go through them. So most of these bags have our yarns, uh, our skeins of yarn. Uh, so because it's a crafting style game based on yarn and sewing, uh, they did these wooden, let's see how well you can see that, uh, wooden skeins and balls of yarn. Yeah, so from, from the purples to the oranges, uh, we also have uh, blue, we have red, we have greens, and of course yellows. So the, the six different colors of yarn you can use to craft items in this game. And then along with, because I already talked about it being uh, asymmetric player powers, uh, each player actually has their own uh, token uh, worker piece that they get to move around their own player board. So not only is it a different shape, it's a different color to help you see the difference. We have this little cat token, which I believe was the first player token. Let me verify if it says, or if it's just kind of a, a bonus. Because now I'm just curious. Hmm. I don't currently see it in the rule book, uh, so it could be used as a first player token. 
or just to mark certain things in the game uh, if you want to use it that way. Okay, so then in the box we also have this um, organization tray from Game Trays that uh, XYZ partnered with. Uh, it has its own lid for the different pieces to fit into. So as you can see, these six sections in the middle have room for the different colors, which I gotta do it. I got I'm a little OCD about certain things, and I really enjoy keeping the rainbow stuff in order. So I had to go Roy G B S on it. But these, um, you can pull this out while playing, and use it at the table to keep everything organized, which is nice. And then when you're done playing, put it right back into the tray, throw it into the box. So I, I do like the functionality of not just um, storage, but uh, for use while playing that they have designed this for. So as I keep dividing these things up, you'll see how everything fits in here quite nicely. So like all of these tiles, you'd actually divide up in the, into their types. So you got the teddy bears, scarfs, mitten, and they can end up going into the bottom of this tray. Yep. Keep distracting myself with all the pretty colors and not thinking about the stacks I'm supposed to put it on. So as you can see, these stacks now easily fit into these for storage. And then these, um, let's see if I can find all the pieces. These th three pieces I, I pointed out earlier, th uh, that count as a three yarn. There's actually room for it in this tray uh, next to the color right there. I'll try to find all those real quick and put them in. And then we'll, after I do this, we'll move on to the rest of the components. That's it. Blues. And where's my, all my purple ones? A one and a two and a three right there. Right there, and I assume, well, I could break these if however one or two, but since they're all, you want everyone to have access to all the different types, you can just fit them into the, each side of this tray quite easily, and just fill up these two outside edges, or you could put them across the bottom as well with the um, mitten scarf and tailor token items. Okay, and then I assume I could fit these in here if I wanted to. Just like that, all of those pieces fit into the tray without issue. And you can, oh, it's a little bit tighter than I anticipated, so maybe the wooden ones don't go back under there. But that's always something good to know. These might be sticking up a bit much. I'll find out soon enough. Yep. So I may have to put some of these on their sides and go from there. But for now, that'll work well. All of 
the wooden bits can go back into their ziplock. Which will fit just fine into the box. No complaints. And then we're gonna have these little bowls. So these bowls, um, like I talked about already, this is the base um, retail copy of our travels. Comes with these plastic uh, bowls that each player will get one while playing. And you can kind of store all of your little color yarn pieces in as you play. So which is nice, you can hold quite a bit of pieces in that. And then um, Adam, I believe as Adam has talked about it, or possibly Noah from XYZ, um, has talked about like there's always, at some point in the game, someone has so many pieces that they'll just take their bowl and dump it on the table. So it's always fun to kind of see when that's gonna happen with someone. Now, if you go and uh, order the deluxe components, they actually have wooden uh, bowls to replace these, which are quite nice. I've seen them at the convention. And next up, we have our game board, which would sit in the middle of the table uh, with the component tray right next to it. And this is where you put a lot of the different project tokens, uh, project cards, and everything, which we're about to open up. First, let's look at all of the uh, player boards. So these are actually uh, double-sided. So first off, we have uh, Rebecca, the and who has a favorite project called the Snow Source. So keep an eye out for that card in a little bit. So as you can see, there's a shopping icon. There's a crafting icon. And then she can also kind of shop and craft um, in the same turn. Uh, and then on the back, there is Theo, uh, who is looking for some wrist warmers to make. Now, the uh, shopping and crafting ability is the same on this one. But basically, oh, I, I want that um, high shop ability. Uh, but I can choose uh, one or two, one of two characters with uh, different project options as well. And then we have uh, Derek, who likes the Prodigy Cal. Uh, as you can see, the shop is different. It's a little bit lower, but the crafting ability is a lot higher for Derek. And then we have Amara on the back of this one, um, who's looking to make hacky sacks. Uh, there's a hacky sack project uh, that is being looked for. And then we have Niha, uh, who's looking for the unicorn. Um, as you can see, the the shopping ability is a little bit lower. The craft is kind of like our first uh, one for Theo and uh, Rebecca. But you can also th see that uh, the special ability on this one is using any colors um, on the one craft option down here. And then on the back of this, uh, same abilities, different project is going to be Alex looking for the infinity scarf. And then our last player board is Ted who wants to make the octopus, which we already talked about the octopus being a, a project card, but that's also the um, the pattern that was provided with the, the game itself that you can go out and make on your own. So Ted wants to make an octopus. On here you can see the, the shop and the crafting abilities up top are kind of the same as our previous board, but then the ability is um, to basically take uh, just pick, go pick up yarn. And so instead of um, having to shop from the central, it's basically uh, kind of acting like you're dying, so dying yarn and that you're, you're finding yarn and just making it whatever color you want. So you're taking uh, yarn of, of one color and then crafting. And then on the back of Ted, we have uh, Eliza, uh, who's looking to make a robot. Um, so who wouldn't want a stuffed robot? Um, same ability as the other side as well. And then you can actually see the icons in the top corner that match the wooden components that they would use 
which I'll go and pull one of these back out to kind of show in general. So you start the game this off to the side so you can start the first turn uh, choosing any of these four actions. And then you just place your, your marker on it. And then each turn you just have to move to a different location. You could jump to here, do that one. So then you can't basically you can't take the same action two two turns in a row. So you got to uh, plan ahead on what you want to do so you don't get stuck and not being able to do something. Okay, so those are the player boards, and now we can bust out all of the cards and such. Uh, so we have several different decks of cards. And the nice thing about, not only did it have a uh, really nice uh, organization tray for pulling out on the table for those components, the rest of the box has a nice insert as well uh, for cards and the way everything is stored. So they've really thought through the storage system and how it's going to go back into the box and not just, oh, here's good components, but no good way to store them. They've thought things through and that it's a nice, simple plastic um, formed piece but then nice or, or continued into the rest of the box um, this is kind of your 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 yarn box per se in that um, for anyone who likes to, to craft and to sew typically you're going to have like a, a bin or a box or a basket of some sort um, possibly near where you're crafting and all of your different colors are in there and you're pulling them out as you need them so this is kind of a good representation of that itself. Uh, so these spaces I could probably put wooden components in if I wanted to. But I'll probably also put it on top. So now are the different card decks. So let's start with the smaller one. These are going to be some of the larger projects you can complete. Uh, basically say you, say you finish uh, multiple scarves or multiple hats for whatever it may be, you can turn in because during the game there will be multiple projects across here and kind of laid out as such. And that, um, okay, I've, I've completed made four hats, so I can turn that in for uh, more points than the four hats alone would have been worth. So there's a lot of different ones of these. Um, we have the nap time where, oh, you need your teddy and a blanket to go take a nap or you have your your pond hockey was making a lot of hats for the local pond hockey team. Uh, a lumberjack needs their scarf and their hat as they go cut some wood. Uh, snow day, you, you need everything for outside. Uh, maybe someone had triplets and they all all, all three need some bears. Uh, a baby shower where you're making a blanket, a hat, and a teddy for the kid. Oh, it's Oktoberfest. Maybe you're you're going out on a date night, and someone needed to. Uh, each person needed a scarf and some mittens. So there's a, a lot of the different ones of these um, in different combinations, and they've had fun naming them as well. Uh, so the BFFs, they they need to be completely ma uh, matching sets of something. So they're going to want hats and and gloves and and scarves to wear together at the same time. Uh, stargazers, oh, you want to go lay out in the field, so you need that blanket, and maybe you need some hats to keep your, your, head, your head and ears warm. Uh, winter is coming, where it's going to get really cold, so you just know you need blankets inside. Uh, the bleacher brome, uh, basically you're going to need everything. Go watch a football game, whatever it may be, that you want to go sit on the bleachers and, and watch some kind of sports and support someone. Oh, you got to take a blanket to wrap around yourself and everything else to keep yourself warm. And then we got like our peas in a pod, uh, share a blanket, but you won't both need a teddy. Uh, so fun little different combinations of those projects that you've already started to been making and, and crafting. And then you turn those in for uh, bigger and better points. So these are actually the cards where you get the majority of your points during the game. So manage your resources well enough to collect all uh, the different types of yarn turn them, um, craft them into the smaller items and turn them in for these projects. Okay, so now let's take a look at the card decks. Um, now the first thing that everyone has seen me do before and check for before is to see if decks of cards have a quick um, release tab or quick pull to tear them open as so you don't have to take a knife and break it apart. 
or nearest uh, cutting cards. Now, at first glance, it didn't look like the had a pull tab, but as I look closer, see the glare um, on it, I can actually just make it out right here on the side. If I do it right, I can be able to catch it. Now, these clear ones are always a little bit harder to catch right and grab, but if I do it, it's going to tear open very smoothly uh, with no risk to the cards themselves, which is always uh, appreciated. I'm going to go ahead and do both of these because I know some of these cards are going to go with these. So I'll make sure I go through all the cards at the same time. And I can tell it's here. Just follow the light line that's glaring and find it right there. So if you get this game yourself, uh, do take the time to find that pull tab so you don't have to cut these packages open. Um, they'll protect your cards, um, keep them safe, and make sure that you can play fully without anything messed up. So of course, the back of most of these, the uh, name of the game, nicely printed on it uh, with very straightforward artwork, um, but it's not distracting in any way, but it's still nice to see. And then let's see how these split up. So I want to show off the different types. So I'm going to split them real quick. Okay, so we're going to have a couple of different types of cards. Okay, and then it looks like one of the cards in here is uh, for base on the artist. I believe it is uh, Rochelle St Stetter. Um, Apologies if I mispronounced that in some way. Uh, did the illustration for this game. Uh, has uh, Rochelle's website, rochellestetter.com, uh, email address, and at. So if you're interested in following and seeing more of the illustrations that Rochelle does, uh, be sure to go check that out. Um, and for other publishers or such out there that enjoy this artwork, uh, maybe be able to reach out and work along work with Rochelle to have some artwork in your own game. And that looks like we have four of these uh, reference cards as well. So each player can get one of these. That is a reminder of the phases of the game, the actions you take in the icon reference right there, the restock phase and uh, restock actions that can happen. Uh, and then a little bit more uh, saying kind of refer to page 10 of the rule book for additional details if you don't understand what this these mean but once you you've played the game and you understand these you don't have to reference the rule book very much it's pretty um very straightforward iconography um things written on the cards if you need to know more so it's nice to have reference cards i always um prefer games to have reference cards than not so the majority of these cards are going to be your um yarn that you can collect and buy of, di of the different colors. Um, so we have the reds. Uh, some of these will have uh, multiple bar uh, uh, balls of, or skeins of yarn on them, of which when you select these cards, you actually get multiple instead of just the one. So we have the red, we have the orange, we have yellows, two on that. We have our greens as expected. Of course, you can't have green without blue. And we can't forget purples. And looks like they all have pretty much the same number of uh, singles and doubles in this. Um, these all get shuffled together. And then six of these, get, uh, six cards are out every round in the middle of this board. Um, then we got the mixed color sets uh, like red and orange, orange, yellow, yellow, red, green, blue, blue, purple, purple, green. And those are our doubles, and then we got some triples even. Red, orange, yellow, orange, purple, green, uh, blue, red, yellow. So uh, so kind of our primaries, our secondary sets, um, our cools, and, uh, and then we had our warm ones already. And then we have um, basically some wilds, and that allows you to select uh, any color, and it tells you how many, number, how many you can pick up when you do that. So... All of these are, are very clear in that the colors are bright 
the number is clear at the top. And if, if you have any kind of colorblind issues with the cards at least, it says right on the top the color that you get, um, be it any, be it the purple, the greens, the blues, um, and the blue, reds, and yellows. It spells it out for you very clearly, which is very helpful as well. Now granted, I don't have colorblind issues, but I know that's a bigger deal nowadays uh, to help with inclusivity in gaming, is making sure everyone's able, able to play and making that as easy as possible is um, really important now. And I agree with it, even if I don't experience it myself, uh, designing and finding games and playing games that support that mindset of inclusivity is, is uh, becoming more and more a priority. And so I appreciate it when I see publishers already doing that. And so now we have some of these um, kind of special project and uh, special cards that can come out that get mixed into these. Now, granted, you don't use all of these every game. But typically, there's so many that get mixed in. I'd have to verify in the rulebook how many it was. But we have like a Tangled Cat. I choose a player that player can't craft an item on their next turn. Uh, this... Now, I'm seeing two of these cards in the, in the deck, and the last time I played this, granted it was online, both of these cards were used against me in the game. So it was a little frustrating, because I had planned to craft and then immediately get these cards played against me, so it did slow down my production in the game. So there is a, a minor take that style of, of play in this game. Uh, not super extreme, but it is uh, in, in the game. We have um, some donate ones where... When these cards come up, it says, uh, has you give another player one yarn from your stash. Um, you get to pick the player, you get to pick the color, but you're still kind of losing something to someone else. We have our yarn sale. So you get to take a total of three yarn from the supply. Kind of, there, There's good cards and bad cards in these in that you never know what's going to happen um, each round for each player. We have our friendly clerk. All players take a yarn from the supply. So sometimes that just affects yourself. Sometimes it helps someone else, not you. Sometimes it only helps you, or sometimes it can help everyone. And then we also have like the all players craft an item with the craft circle, um, where just everyone's hanging out, chilling, and crafting together at the same time. So the, those are the cards, uh, effect cards that can trigger, get mixed in. And then we have all these uh, unique and special projects that when they come out the player who flipped it over basically has a choice to give it to someone or keep it um, and these are some of those special projects that i mentioned um, that the different character boards are looking for and get bonus points for completing but let's just kind of look take a look at them we have the button eye sweater uh, so these will have uh, specific colors and numbers of pieces of those colors that it needs and then a point value um, so say you gave them to someone else uh, it can be detrimental because if they don't complete it by the end of the game that's actually negative points against them so you can use it kind of defensively uh, take that style or you if you say you have that material already you might select it so you can get the points for it or uh, because maybe it's your your um, signature item that you're looking to make you want bonus points for it as well uh, we have our robot, so like we did mention the robot for uh, Eliza. Uh, this is like, oh, just five of the same color. So uh, kind of like making a teddy bear in a sense, and that it's but it's a bit bigger. It uses a lot of yarn, but you get points for it. The Snugglesaurus, uh, it, it needs a lot of yarn to complete it. Um, so a lot of these projects may not be as high value as turning in other project or other pieces down here that you've crafted to the main projects but they're still really fun very unique items uh, like we have our unicorn we have friendship bracelets which is kind of fun uh, because um, whoever makes it actually has to give yarn away to other players they're very thematic uh, we found our hacky sack Okay, and here's the octopus that we've talked about already multiple times, and that it's a special project, and, and it actually came with the uh, the pattern and talking about how to make that as well. Uh, we have an infinity scarf, um, and of course, as you can see, they, sh they showed the different colors on it, kind of like infinity stones on the scarf itself. 
uh, kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, reference. Uh, a lot of these different things, they've, they've had subtle references to different things in this game. Uh, Prodigy, uh, Cal, the, the wrist warmers, the shoulder monster, and for those who uh, know and play D&D, &D, like the artwork itself is kind of reminiscent Reminiscent of a ranger, almost. Um, if you think about the the monster itself, um, a beholder style monster from D and D. So the kind of reference they have to that is kind of fun, including the dragon and it burning down a hut and what appears to be a monk running away. So for those uh, who get the reference, um, I'm sure you'll enjoy laughing at this one. I won't spoil that one for y'all though. Uh, we have a dwarf's beard, so you could actually craft like a full beard to wear, essentially. Uh, loot. Uh, we have uh, a trouble. Uh, uh, our cunning hat. Our laser sword. Uh, so. I'm not sure I've ever seen a, a sword made out of, of yarn, but an interesting uh, option to make. Uh, I think we all know what that's referencing. Uh, Tom's scarf. Again, a very uh, obvious reference for those who know about it. A space suit. Uh, probably one of a very iconic sweater that everyone knows and aptly named the friendly neighbor. Uh, now I can't call it exactly what it is or what it's referencing, but a very friendly neighbor indeed. Uh, we have our tattered sweater, which is also a very famous sweater. Again, uh, perfect for the Halloween season right now as well. Um, we have the undone, uh, as you can see in the artwork, it's slowly unraveling and pulling apart. Uh, a house scarf, um, and of course the point value for it had to be the perfect reference as well. Uh, another house scarf of a different color, and we have to get the other color options as well for those house scarves. So you won't see all of these in every game, but still very cool to see and all the, the fun references they have for them. So that is what was in the main box. Um, let me fit them back in, all these cards into this insert. cards in there, bowls in here, and before I put everything away, let's take a quick moment to look at these other cards we talked about. These are additional, looks like additional project cards, I like what we just looked at. Uh, these are uh, just a little mini expansion that I got at a convention, so they did not come in the main box, so keep that in mind. Uh, probably what might become one of my favorite items is the, the fuzzy math rocks. Um, everyone knows I am a dice goblin, that I collect dice you know, of different sorts and like to buy them at conventions and show them off. So imagine getting a fully sewn and stuffed set of uh, math rocks to add to the collection, if that was the actual project to make. It would be fun. Okay, we have Tom's hat. The this is the vassal, the vassal special, of course. Um, you can kind of see the dice tower in the back and the classic colors shape. Um, we have everyone's welcome. Uh, 
Ooh, that is a lot of yarn to make it though. 12 total, two of each color. That would be a tough project to complete. And then uh, we've already mentioned the dice tower and we have it here right now. So these um, seem to be like um, kind of more ga board game industry uh, references for uh, either reviewers or other channels and such. So that, that's cool that they've done that and I had those options. Now I don't can't remember if these um, were part of a particular Kickstarter, uh, either from Arch Rivals or from a different uh, Kickstarter that did promo card, uh, different promo sets to add to a lot of different games um, with some of um, the different uh, channels and stuff supporting and backing, and so getting their uh, references onto different cards for different games but they'll be fun to add into the game regardless and then now I'm going to see if these wooden pieces will fit in here without issue because I'm seeing some space I'm thinking that would be bad put them in the bottom of this instead of in the ziplock so I'll see how well this all fits in I think that might do. Yeah, put the wood pieces down there. Do this. Uh, this was right there. Now I do need to attempt to reconfigure some of these pieces real quick. What I do, I'm just going to sort them into the different shapes and see how I need to fit them around to make it fit better. Because I'm sure this will easily close once I sort these correctly and lay them in in a better way than I had. So it looks like the hats are too tall to just go in like that, but it won't bother me to just do this, split those up, turn those over. Those can go into there because I think those were the biggest ones that were sticking up the most. Let me find all of this. Uh, oh, there's another hat. I'm going to start splitting up. We have uh, scarves, we have blankets, we have mittens. There's another hat, of course. I keep finding them now that I thought I was done. Uh, teddies. Or teddy bears, however you want to say it. I think sorting these will make it easier to stack, ultimately. I'm going to try that real quick. See if my mittens, see how a stack of mittens fits. Okay, mittens would be too tall. Will they fit sideways into it? Not really. Not well, at least. I know they would have designed this to fit in into here. So I'm just making sure if I can figure out the best way to do that. Because, you know, I want to make the best use of it. I, want, I don't necessarily want to have to put these in zip blocks. So just making sure I figure out the right way to do it now. I'm sure these blankets are short enough. I'll put them on this side out of the way for now. We have all of our scarfs, which should be skinny enough as well. So that's going to be a good option for here. And next we have all the teddy bears. Which might fit around the hat quite well allowing these to shift over, fall down, and we got closure. Yeah, and then it goes into the top right there. 
put those inside the cover of the robot to keep that. Now granted, those bowls might be a little loose, they do, do seem to fit down tight. So I'm gonna do our shake test now. The only concern I have is the possibility because uh, we've we have now removed um, two pieces of punch board. Uh, I may need to put those into the bottom of the box to keep everything tighter, but we'll find out real quick. Do the shake, do the shake, roll it, turn it, stand it on end, roll it on end. Um, as you can see, uh, the box fit is pretty good in that it's not trying to come open by itself very easily. Uh, so that means things have not shifted too far towards the end of the box. Now it's possible some of those cards have shifted just because of the looseness. Um, so that comes out pretty easily right there, which is always nice to see. Uh, yeah, like, like I expected, some looseness on the cards themselves. Um, some of these pieces move, jumped around. So yeah, I, I would recommend probably putting cardboard back under it because that was the full size of the box will help tighten it up a bit. So, if you end up getting this game, um, I do recommend put, keeping the cardboard from the punch out a little tight, um, so that might even help it more. But apparently the bottom of the box is tighter than the top. That or it's just longer. Maybe the, maybe the cart is just a bit long for the box. But that'll be good for what I'm using it for. Because I don't care if I bend that piece of uh, punch board bo uh, cardboard. So now let's do this again. Put this here. Put that on top of it. All right. Nope. First, this board goes on top of that. This sits right there quite tight. That goes there. Nice snug fit on that lid. And that is our travels from XYZ Games. One to four players, ages eight and up. Um, 30 to 45 minutes, which is pretty accurate based on the number of times we've played once you learn the game. It is very straightforward in how to play and good iconography, so it does play in about that time frame, especially with the insert and everything, how it's set up. Uh, set up is very fast and very easy. So I do recommend checking this out if you enjoy it. Um, what you saw here, or if you enjoy seeing some of the playthroughs, go check out the XYZ Game Labs dot com website where you can learn more about it purchase it yourself or go check out a lo local game store to find it as well